These four people had never seen snow before but were going to participate in the Winter Olympics bobsled competition. When they pushed the coffin-like bobsled out, everyone in the audience was stunned. No one thought they would make it to the finals. Because they were from a tropical country called Jamaica, there is no winter here, and the average low temperature is 20 degrees. Bannock never thought he'd be a bobsledder in the first place. He had been preparing for track and field training. He had vowed to go to the Olympics, but then the runner next to him at the trials fell. Bannock looked on in despair at the finish line. He had been preparing for the Olympics for too many years. He asked to compete again, but the athletic commissioner refused. Because no matter what, there is always an injustice in a race. Bannock was frustrated. That's when he saw a picture of his father and another man. It was Irv, the Olympic bobsled champion. He had a theory about sprinters pushing the bobsled. Irv had been trying to persuade Bannock's father to change his sport for years. Bannock suddenly decided to compete in the Winter Olympics. Because it was the only bobsled team in Jamaica, he didn't even have to try out for the competition to go to the Olympics. But there was one problem. Ice! You mean winter as in igloos and Eskimos and penguins and ice? Possibly. See you. Ice. You mean winter as in igloos and Eskimos and penguins and ice? Possibly. See you. Coffee is a close friend of Bannock's. He joined the bobsled team for his friend. Bannock later found Irv at a tavern. Irv dropped out of the Olympics years ago for cheating. At this point, he was in a state of depression. Bannock kept asking Irv to be their coach. Bannock said he could run faster than his father. Irv could take that chance if he wanted to prove himself. So Irv agreed. The bobsled team was to men short. Bannock gathered the young men and introduced them to bobsledding. In a nutshell, the bobsled goes from the top of an icy chute to the top. It's a very exciting and enjoyable race. It just has a small downside of high-speed collisions. Oh, yeah. After the bobsled video was shown, the room was empty. Everyone was scared away. Only to later rivals agreed to join the bobsled team. They were the unlucky men who wrestled with Bannock at the running trials. Branner wants to leave Jamaica for the Olympics. And Bevel is a rich kid, but he didn't want to go home and inherit a billion dollars. And so the first Jamaican bobsled team was created. Irv had a bobsled build, a piece of scrap metal, two stands, four wheels. When the bobsled team saw the bobsled, it was shocked. There was no snow in Jamaica. They practiced on the hillside. The bobsled was 300 kilograms. They had to push the bobsled in six seconds to start. On the first attempt, they all fell down. On the second attempt, they ran and crawled at the same time. On the third attempt, they crawled and fell at the same time. The fourth time, the fifth time, the sixth time, they kept falling. They practiced for many days. The last time they practiced, they successfully pushed the bobsled to start. They stumbled and fell all the way down the hill. Then they were surprised when they hit a police car. But this time, they managed to push the bobsled in six seconds. The guys get put in the ice truck in Jamaica, where the average temperature is 27 degrees. It's the only way they can touch the ice. But they train for cold tolerance, because they want to go to Canada for the Winter Olympics. Here's how everyone reacted when they said they wanted to go to the bobsled competition. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Irv asked the athletic commissioner for money to go to the games, but the sports commissioner thought they were joking, not to mention that they would not be allowed to embarrass themselves abroad. The four members of the bobsled team did everything they could to raise money. Some sang in the streets to make money, some went around looking for sponsors, some competed in arm wrestling to make money. They even set up street stalls to do performance art. As long as you pay one dollar, you can kiss a handsome man. Finally, Bevel sold a car to sponsor the money. The group finally flew to Canada, outside the airport. It was snowy. The four young guys were dumbfounded when they arrived in Canada. Although they were good runners, but they couldn't even stand up on the ice. Irv taught them to walk on their four legs. But one by one they still fell on all sides. Irv saw these images inside. He got the bobsled team and old bobsled. Bannock stroked the bobsled with hope. They carried the old bobsled into the arena before the Winter Olympics. It was like a pause button was pressed on the whole field. Everyone was frouncing. The four Jamaicans didn't care. Irv let them get inside the bobsled. After all, they had to get used to the feeling of being on the track. For the first time, they were pushed off the track by Irv and the bobsled stumbled all the way down. Finally, The next day they tried to push the bobsled and won. However, as they ran, their stride went haywire. 
They became a joke when the news reached Jamaica, but the four of them still didn't give up and didn't let up on their training. They ran and did pull-ups. They kept practicing on the slide. Even when they were sitting in the tub, they were searing. The night before the race, Surf gave the Bob Obsled team a big gift. It was their first race suit. But by the next day, the race officials cut the qualifying time for the race by two seconds. From 1.0 to one minute, but the four Jamaican boys were undeterred. This Winter Olympic event is very exciting. It can be called the biggest and coldest roller coaster the competitors have ever ridden. The athletes could have fallen off the bob sled if they weren't careful. There are no broken bones, only crash bones in the high-speed collision. They will either reach the end of the race or they reach the end of their lives. And this group of racers came from the equatorial region. They've seen snow for the first time and they're going to compete in a bob sled race. They're pushing their bob sleds and they're ready to go. After a little trot, they sprinted down the slide, and one by one, they jump into the bobsled. They set off in 6, 13 seconds. They slid all the way to the end of the course in a total of 59, 46 seconds, and this qualified for the race. Even though they came in last place, but they were still very happy. They polished and maintained their old bobsled. They also named the bobsled Cool Runnings. Cool Runnings means safe travels. They were still celebrating. Irv was informed by the organizers that the Jamaican team had been disqualified from the race because they had no experience in international competition. But the previous rule was participation in Olympic qualifying events in the year of the games would be considered international competition. Irv was well aware that because of his past actions had caused the Jamaican team to be targeted by the organizers. He approached the organizers to apologize for past mistakes and asked them to reinstate the Jamaican team to the competition. He said the Jamaican members had earned the right to enter the stadium and wave their flag. It doesn't matter if they come in first or 50th place. That's what the Olympics is all about. His comments put the organizers to shame and reinstated the Jamaican athletes to the competition. The Jamaican Bobo sled team has had a difficult journey. Maybe that's why they were more nervous when they got to the official competition. Bannock tried to learn from his rivals to cheer up the team, but the team was even more nervous at this point. They stumbled at the start of the cart and couldn't make the jump into the bob sled. They hit ice everywhere along the way. They ended up with a total time of 58 seconds. The team was frustrated. By this point in the race, everyone knew the mechanics of the game. So it was all about the mindset. Bannock also wanted to learn from his opponent's methods. Coffee said they were walking the Jamaican way, speaking Jamaican, so they could make the Jamaican bob sled program better. The next day they drove in and sang. Earth saw them and smiled. This time they chose to race on their own terms. Today they had a very solid start. They weren't even a little faster than their rivals. Yesterday their heads were bobbing all over the place. Today their bodies were steady and neat. And they were flying through the corners. The commentators were amazed at what they saw. Where did these guys come from? Their final time was 56 to 53. They made it to the top 8. They even had the potential to win an Olympic medal. On the day of the final, they were in high spirits. With a perfect start, they slid into the chute. They were smooth going into and out of the corners. But then one of the screws came loose as they were going fast. The bobsled starts to stumble out of control. They almost lost control in the turn. In eight days, be able to hold it. Oh! Bannock saw the lifeguards running towards him. He asked his teammates if they were still alive. He got a positive answer and struggled to take off his hat. The lifeguards were halfway to a sudden stop. Then they made a lane. The four Jamaican runners came out with smiles on their faces. Carrying their bobsleds, the people around them watched their determined steps. Suddenly there was applause. In this moment, they understood the Olympic spirit. The four Jamaican runners walk across the finish line with big smiles on their faces. They lost the race but won everyone's respect. This is a true story based on a true story. In 1988, Four athletes from Jamaica competed in the Winter Olympics with the will to win and achieve remarkable results in the bob sled competition. Four years later, they returned to the Olympics. They showed the Olympic spirit again and again. That is never give up and never give up.